a nice day at work today. Just one farm stead left. What a turn on, sir. Six cottages, five huts, three villas, 40 farmsteads. Leave that old monster on the hill. Why, with all this tax money we've collected, hey, you think that we've robbed them. Now, don't be silly. <laughs> we actually did rob most of them. And lucky for us, that blasted vigilante, the Black Knight, hasn't shown his ugly face this time around. I think perhaps our fiendish friend has finally learned his lesson. Couldn't have gone on forever, after all. Do you think he's given up fighting us for something more? You already? Well, he of all people should know that making criminals pay doesn't pay. <laughs> right, oh, shut it! Now we've got just one measly farm set between us and our first day of eating tax collecting without any incidents involving that Black Knight fellow. So let's not mess this up because I just know how much County Wall would love to hear about that. All right. So this is the squire, then. Well, these pathetic debtors can make a nice end to this profitable day. Open up in there! Open up this door! Indeed, it is us. Why, why, hello, boys. You didn't tell us you were coming for a visit today. It's because we come every Sunday. That's right. You just what we love to go fetch the man of the house. Why are you blistering old fuck? Get out of here! The tax collectors are here! Oh, no. Of the tax collectors, for the name of the Holy Fire Beast of the Ewing here on a Saturday. Uh, well, hello there, boys. This is my dear friends. It's tax collectors and what surprise shopping by on Saturday. It's a Sunday, you moron. Right, of course it is. <laughs> How silly of me. How many of you have served, Steve? You are indebted to your lord and sovereign, Count Dubois. Grand total of 82 gold pieces for this week's taxation. 82 gold pieces, is it? Well, I'm afraid that's going to be a bit of a sticky wicket. You see, I've only got... Uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's most unfortunate. Guys! But, but, but I'll tell you what, I'll give you three now. I'll pay you the remaining 79 back next week. How's that, sir? Hi, Emma! Uh, but please, sir, I'm just a simple farmer trying, trying to make ends meet. Yes, and I've heard that one before. You've heard that one, have you? I've been about a hundred times a day. Now tie him up, and I'll be taking those, thank you. Please, sir, I'm just a poor old man. You're a poor old man who owes me 85 pieces of gold. Then 29, 79. Just paid you three. Well, I'm charging you an additional six for being smelly, disgusting, and all around lowly and depressing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, men? Well, let's move out. Not so fast, pestilent stone stubble! Lord, to the black knight! Show yourself, you cowardly rodent! <laughs> and return to them their gold, or you and your men will leave here today dead. Oh, how are we supposed to leave here today if we're all dead? Well, I, um, I... Well, it doesn't matter, because you'll be dead! <laughs> I am the Black Knight, arch rival of the evil Count de Bois, defender of the people, protector of righteousness, curator of justice, the will of goodness, Sword of bravery, the hand of courage, the shield of wisdom, and the white hot fire of enduring freedom. I will stop you, noble You have embarrassed me one too many times, Black Knight. Prepare to die. God's attack!
told you. Dirk and his cronies caught the Black Knight this morning and made off with him to the castle. But they haven't been able to catch the Black Knight for years now. How come Dirk manages it today? Well, they were very sneaky about it. Very sneaky indeed. That warmy fellow, Perry's his name, snuck up behind the Black Knight and gave him a good conk on the head. A good conk on the head was all it took to subdue the Black Knight. Well, I know this sounds a bit funny, yeah, but I'm telling you the truth. And I suppose you just stood by and watched it all happen, eh? Well, naturally, I did try to intervene. Uh, you know my old back. Oh, come on. I'll spare us, Esther. Well, you've seen those gods. They've got swords. I haven't got a sword. He hasn't got a sword, Maggie. I know he hasn't got a sword, but do you really believe that the undefeatable Black Knight should just lose it for no reason at all? Especially lose to Lieutenant Perry? I mean, he's a few serves short of a feet, though. <laughs> oh, but you should have seen it. The Black Knight put up quite a fight before he left. There were corpses everywhere. It took me ten minutes to clean it all up. Corpses, you say? Yeah, corpses everywhere. Oh, coops. That means dead bodies, Maggie. I know what it means, Esther. I just have a hard time believing that the undefeatable Black Knight could just lose it for no reason at all. Oh, get off it. Don't you have anything better to worry about? Well, as much as I hate to admit it, Maggie, she does have a point. That was defenseless. The Black Knight is all that stood between us and that tyrannical count. Well, uh, yeah, who knows what it'll do now? Well, what are we supposed to do about it? We're not superheroes with superpowers. We're even mediocre heroes. Mediocre. Shut it. <laughs> so, how are we supposed to stand up against Count Juan and then? Never fear, kindly maiden, but I, Sir Laddie the Valiant. Take your back, you little twerp! Get back here! No, it's Mom. She's over here, dear. Dad, how dare you go running off with company around like that? Mom, I've already told you, it's Sir Lenny the Valiant now. Pardon me, I've forgotten you've become so noble since breakfast. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some business to attend to with the count. You can go battle to Bois as soon as you've tidied your room, Mr. Mom. No but get your little royal honey inside now. <laughs> Enforce serenity and bring peace. Oh, 
goodness, you're right. I say that name twice. Don't I? <laughs> That's rather embarrassing. <laughs> uh, anyway, people, I, George, am your hero now. And must you understand that you want to fight for us and protect us simply out of the goodness of your heart? Well, exactly. Dressed like that. What's going on with this? Well, I don't believe you've ever set foot in this town before. No, that's true, but it's been my calling to... But what sort of chap wanders around the countryside anyway looking for help and village with the refuge? Don't seem to be a common occupation, does it? Well, no, but we're not common. Yeah, what kind of experience, yeah? How many other towns have you stumbled into? Well, I assure you, sir, I'm, I'm overqualified for the position. <laughs> Lying to them isn't going to help. <laughs> Shut up, William. I'm trying to win them over, and I'd like to take a moment to thank you for your considerable help in the matter. Well, there's certainly no need to be bitter, George, I should say. What sort of fee do you try for your noble services? Oh, well. There's no fee. I, I don't really care about the money. Oh, oh my God, Lord of this. He says he doesn't care about the money. Join us 
celebration with his execution. <laughs> God, let us prison him in the dungeon. With pleasure, my lord. You sick, cowardly dog. I'll die before I let you kill me. <laughs>
do. That question, you know your father doesn't even permit you to leave your room. Much less one off gallivanting in the dungeon. That's true. But he does allow you two to go anywhere. Now look, though Lady Plum and I care for you very much, you can't ask us to risk our lives in a pointless attempt to be impossible. Oh, but what am I to do? I can't just sit here idly awaiting my lover's death. I must do something! <laughs>
What are you planning on doing? Well, we're going to have to find some way to break in and nab the walk. Break in to a castle. Yes, I can see a wonderful plan forming in your head right now. All we have to do is run through the front gates, past all the guards, and luckily stumble across the count by ourselves, I'll bet. Oh, right away, too, without too much of that planning nonsense. And maybe without even properly stretching first. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It sounds so easy. I want to investigate some other possibilities. The front gate will be far too heavily guarded. <laughs> Why do I have the unshakable feeling that this is going to be the most difficult mission we've ever undertaken? Well, that might have something to do with the fact that out of all the, uh, the missions we've uh, undertaken, this one is going to be the most difficult. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've never broken into a castle. Uh, uh, what about that one outside the evil forest of Dreadshire? Oh, you mean the haunted one? No, no, the other, next to the swamp. Yeah, the, uh, the starving lions. George, that wasn't a fortress. That was an enclosed petting zoo. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I had to beat a crazed emu to death with my boot. <laughs> It doesn't matter. If we're going to do this, let's get it over with so we can get out of this town. Right. Just got to find some way inside. Ah, no way here. What do you do, do you? Or how do we get inside? Well, how should I know? You're the mastermind behind this one. But you just said you did. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, excuse oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> Who's there? The fools! I'm right behind you! <laughs> this can only mean one thing. Oh, you mean to say you figured it out already? I thought it would have taken you a bit longer, honestly. Well, so simple, really. These walls must be possessed by evil spirits. <laughs> Exercise holy water, it's in here somewhere. Take care, you melon head! These walls aren't possessed! Look!
what do we have? We got stone and, and mortar and iron gates and hundreds of men gardening at all times, right? <laughs> well, all we have to do is put that all together and see what we can come up with. Now, luckily for you two, I've done most of the thinking aspect. So all you have to do is the physical part. Here's where we start. George, are you paying attention? William, up there in the tower. Ah, yes, about 900 feet up, there's a dazzling pigeon poop on that granite slab. How embarrassing. Oh, William, your sarcasm is quelled by the intense beauty of that fair goddess. <laughs> all alone on that windowsill as the sun sits on the western horizon. The light draws nigh. Oh, but you have got to be kidding me. Just gaze upon her, William. Bear witness to her lovely features, her a stunning figure. Her skin is white and smooth as Bob Niger. Oh, oh, how brazzle lofty she is. Brazzle lofty? What kind of a word is brazzle lofty? Adjective. <laughs> Sir William. 
<laughs> I am the upholder of justice, the bringer of peace, the enforcer of serenity, the renderer of fortitude, the crasher Hold of... Hold on, just a minute. Uh, Harry, didn't we deal with our hero problem last week? Yes, we did, sire. I thought so. Who in the places are you then? Well, um, actually, I was just getting that before you interrupted me. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing then. <laughs> um, I feel rather foolish. My, my sincerest apologies. Please, please go on. Crushing evil, I mean. I yes. <laughs> The crusher of evil, the ender of oppression, and the indomitable writer of wrongs. You villainous crooks shall taste my steel.
I'm sure. But first, we must concoct an ingenious plan to capture our new menace. He's already proven his strength over you and your men, so now we must test his wits. Do you mean a trap, my lord? Yes. Fiendishly clever snare for our new enemy. Something he will not expect. But, my lord, we don't know very much about him. Aside that, not from his parts, of course. And his generous nature, what are we going to do? So, what could we fathom that any noble hero would be unable to resist? <laughs> I've got it! We'll throw. A huge chili cook-off. <laughs> <laughs> and when he gets there, we'll make him the... You don't think so, do you? It's a bit obvious. You're right. You're right. <laughs> ah, I've got it. I've got it. What if we round it up and kill Everyone's first born until... No. I, I suppose it's been done before. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I've got a good idea. Oh, that's ridiculous. But you haven't even heard it yet. The part where you have a good idea is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, just give it a chance. Look, as we were fleeing back to the castle today, I overheard Sir George just in the crowd. He said that he was in love with Lady Gretchen. Oh my! That he'd one day marry her. Lieutenant, that's brilliant! I don't get it. Well, <laughs> you know, the town meeting today, we announced Lady Gretchen's marriage to somebody else. And? And if Sir George left the meeting today, his heroic impulses would force him to intervene. They have to rescue her. My very good, wonderfully diabolical plan. Because, because he couldn't stand up being married to anybody else. Then, as soon as he makes himself known, swarm over him. All we need is someone for her to marry. And who could we find so repulsive and so vile that the very thought of him with Gretchen would drive Sir George back? How about her? Yes, you, me, yes, sir. You're perfect. When he despises you, and you're without a woman, they believe it in an instant. Yes, that's true. Then it is done. Eric, see to it that every villager hears of the town meeting today. And tell them it's about the fair. Yes, my lord. Sir, ready your men. We must all be fully prepared if the day is to go smoothly. Yes, my lord. Good. Now, with any luck, we'll be rid of this test by dinner. Now be gone. Vomitous hustle jewels might like to know what festivities await 
push you out the back, aside from the usual assortments of games, shows, and vendors of fried collectibles, I thought we might spice things up this year. That's why the traitorous outlaw before you, known only as the Black Knight, will be at the fair ceremoniously. Take up your position over there and await my signal. Are you sure about this, George? We're only going to have one shot at this. Don't be such a worry, George. Everything's going fine. Go, 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 go. All right. <laughs>
I guess you're right. The good <laughs> guy will always get the girl. Yeah. The moral side will always come out on top. Yeah. So what if the Count kills you dead? The point is, you'll die for what's right. Love. Okay, but, but William... You could be taken away this very night and tortured for days. Oh, no, William. <laughs> this moment, George, I'm talking. And you will say come out on top. But William... I... Uh, one second, George. Because that's what being the hero is all about. All right, William. I, I think the ancient poet Cicero put it best. William! Thank you. I, I get it, okay? Ah, uh, yes, well, good then. What we have to worry about now is how to steal away Lady Gretchen tomorrow. Well, plan A kind of flopped, didn't it? We never really did make up plan B. Plan C through E were no good to start with. I guess that leaves us with plan G. <laughs> F. <coughs> Indeed, plan F. What's plan F? <laughs> plan F is a particularly brilliant block where William and I slay a virgin camel underneath the white. Wait, 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 <laughs> All right, out of there, you! Please, Mr. George, stop hurting. Squire's boy, aren't you? Aye, that is my name. Eavesdropping on our conversation? No, sir, I wouldn't dare. Well, but just what were you doing in there, laddie? I was just going to keep a lookout during the night, just in case Dirk had walking. Then he started talking, and I just couldn't help but listen. Honest, that's all. Well, your heart was in the right place, at least. <laughs> it's too late for a boy your age to be up. Your mother would kill you. Oh, I hope she does find out. Then she might kick me out of the house like Finally, be a lone hero, just like you, Mr. George. Much more to being a hero than just living on your own. Whatever you are doing, wherever you are, we need loved ones to look out for us. Why, well, William looks out for me just as your mother looks out for you. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, that's my... I don't care. Perry, open it. Of course. Uh, ah! expression a 
said drowning man will catch up a straw? Yes, but I fail to see its relevance here. <laughs> that, my friend, is why you are the sidekick. <laughs> Like the t- 
taste of the people. And there happened to have been 400 very scrumptious people following us who I did not mind seeing eaten alive. What? But then how did you two avoid being eaten by the sharks? Well, that's easy. We were swallowed by a whale. <laughs> a giant killer whale. We lived off plankton and inside its belly for a fortnight before we were blown out of its blowhole on the Grey Island of Goo. <laughs> active volcanoes and one particularly ruthless pirate captain. We spent the next three weeks hacking our way through impenetrable jungles <coughs> pirates intent on our capture. That is the most ridiculous story I've ever heard. <laughs> Are you serious? Don't listen to a word of it. That's nowhere near the truth. All right, first of all, it was a blue whale. No, well, he doesn't care about the civics, William. At any rate, we eventually made it back to India, virtually unscathed. Maharaja was so pleased to have his shoe back that he made us honorable servants of the realm. <laughs> wow, that's quite a story. I'm sure you've got some room to make ours look like bedtime tales. Wish I could say I did, but the only thing I really had to deal with in my time as acting hero was that depressing count and I suppose his daughter. You mean you've never battled an ogre or, or even fought off a dragon? <laughs> no, nothing like that. But... Oh, that's, that's most depressing. How long have you been at it, Black Knight? Please, please, just call me Brian. That is my name, after all, Sir Brian the Black Knight. As you wish, Sir Brian. Well, I took over about two years ago when the Silver Stallion, the hero before me, was publicly flogged, beaten, broken, trampled, racked, hanged, stabbed, run through, dismembered, disemboweled, torn and feathered, and drawn and quartered as an example of the people. But anyways, I was just too excited to be intimidated. I wanted to be a hero so badly that I just jumped right in. Ever since then, I've kind of regretted it. Sure, it's rewarding and all, but it's just a, a little dull. <coughs> well, the routine just becomes monotonous. Every day is the same. They go to collect the taxes, I stop them. I go to rescue Gretchen, I get held up. Each day is indistinguishable from the one before that. Except for that one day when I was captured. Still really not sure how that happened. Still, a little security would be nice in this line of business. Well, of course it's nice, but, but what can be fun when you plan your adventures and you know exactly what's going to happen? Not very much. You make a good point, Black Knight. You know, I really envy you two, traversing the land, finding the darkest of evil, crushing it single-handedly. It's a bunch of fun, all right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm probably boring. No, not, not at all. It's just, it's just, I want to thank you so much for rescuing me from the cows. I don't know how to repay you. Actually, we kind of already thought of that one. <laughs> Sir George, Sir William, I owe you both my life. Forever in your debt. Oh, that's good, because we need your help. <laughs> With what? Sir Brian, later today, at the fair, Lady Gretchen is scheduled to be married to that Captain Dirk. <laughs> We can't rescue her, but we cannot do it alone. We need your help. I see. So, so that's why you rescued me. It is. Well, Sir George, you and your partner seem like noble heroes. Your cause is a just one. It is my duty to protect these lands and their peoples. Anyway, I'm free this afternoon. I'm glad to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We're all in this together. Right now, here's the plan. Like I said, later today, at this fair, Lady Gretchen is scheduled to be married to Cass. <laughs> you two must find two guards, wake them, rest in the crowd, and club them. Once or twice, doesn't really matter, just enough to knock them out. Drag them away, someplace safe and excluded, and exchange clothes. Brian, I'll go ahead and give you my clothes. Once you've done this, you must bring them back on and present them to Dirk as the actual Sir George and Sir William. Oh, you really got it was own men. At this point, we're prepared to escape. Anything going fishy. I will be there to nab Lady Gretchen. That, that you can be sure of. But until then, you've got to keep up the act. Well, what about you? Where do you fit into this ingenious scheme? Like I said, I shall be there to greet Lady Gretchen. That you can be sure of. But anything more I cannot tell you unless I jeopardize the entire operation. After I've got Gretchen, I, I'll cause a big rockets and we'll all escape in the confusion. Brilliant! Yes, I know. Well, it, it sounds a bit risky and a little rough. But it should prove to be fun. Excellent. You two get to the castle and get going. Something to attend to first. Right. Not 
one thing I don't want to hear on this, the day of my daughter's wedding. It's news of an un... un good nature. Uh, Sir George Malorden, he broke into the castle and escaped. Yes! What could be more insulting? They rescued the Black Knight too, sire. That would be more insulting, <laughs> now. No, my lord, they did rescue Black Knight. Those confounded brigands! We were searching the farm since today, like we ordered, when we came across Sir George. He let us on a roundabout chase, disappeared in thin air. Later, we came back to the castle only to find him lollygagging on our dungeons. The dungeon? Yes, sir, to rescue the Black Knight. Oh. Right. Yes, they were in the dungeons, and we got in another scuffle with them, and then they just disappeared in thin air again. Well, I'm afraid that today our magician friend will be disappearing once and for all. <laughs> <laughs> for he is sure to put in an appearance at the wedding, and when he does, we will be ready for him. And if we have any luck, he just might bring back the Black Knight with him. Now, gentlemen, uh, let's get down to these affairs. Uh, I've got a bad feeling about this squire. What, what do you mean, dear? We've only just got here. No, just premonition has been with me all day. It's just if I know something horribly awful is going to happen, I just can't figure out what it might be. Come on now. Yeah, it's the fair. You're supposed to be happy here. Try to ignore it. I don't like the looks of this. What? Do you mean the tapestries? I thought they were out of call for myself. <laughs> Not the tapestries will get the looks of the situation. Oh. <laughs> What's it look like? That's a figure of speech, you old bugger. Right, I knew that. That poor girl is going to be married to that dreadful man, Captain Dirk. I have been <coughs> George all day. Well, I wouldn't be too worried about him. He and his friend ran off quite excitedly this morning. Okay, that makes me feel a little better, but where's Laddie running? I don't know. Well, you probably came here earlier. You know how much you love these things. I don't know. Come on. Why don't we just go get you some of those roasted walnuts you have some?
late as usual. <laughs> uh, I, I have a question, Eric. I do hope you're ready, though, to perform this wedding. It happens to be a lot today. Good. Now, now get it. Ready? We'll be starting in a moment. Lord, the executioner is ready. And it's all been prepared. The waiters are going to begin. Good. By all means, commence. Cover. 
As shall I. Oh, shit. <laughs> Brian, I'm glad to hear you're well. well. As well as one can be with a whore this long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's no bother. I know a friar in these parts who is very, very skilled in the healing arts. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late. I'm afraid my Mustang blew a gasket on the way over there. <laughs> Of course. Lady Gretchen. Oh, Sir George. 